Before we start the absorption, it's really mandatory to prepare the sample. The sample itself needs to be prepared in the following way. First, we have to acidify the sample to reach pH 2. This can be achieved by using concentrated nitric acid. Usually it's done during the sample taking process. Additionally, we have to add to our solution 5 ml nitrate stock solution for 100 ml of sample. In the end, it really depends on the particle load and on the inorganic chlorine content if a dilution is necessary or not. The sample preparation step is really necessary to do it carefully and it's completely independent which method we use. Either color method, APU SIM for instance, or if we use for liquid samples, the batch method. Sample preparation is always the same. So if the sample is not prepared in the way we uh, talked about, we have to fill the sample into our syringes from the APU SIM according to the color method. Therefore, we have to remove the piston out of the syringe. fill in the sample, please be careful that you don't put that much into the syringe. Luckily, we do have, we do have a, a mark on the syringe so that we definitely know that we fill in 100 ml of samples according to the norm. If this is done completely, then we have to add the pistons onto the syringes. It's really mandatory or it's really necessary to add the syringes or the pistons to the syringe body in this in a circular way. Because we have to release the air gap which might be present there. The air gap which might be present is not very useful because in the end of the absorption, that means if the piston is to the end position and the air gap is still present, we have a big problem in the point or in the moment when the system automatically changed to the rinsing function. The valve changed the position to the rinsing solution or to the rinsing function and then if there is still an uh, air gap present, we have a vacuum there which draws up the rinsing solution and mix it completely up to the system and then we have a contamination for all the residual channels and this is not the thing what we want to have finally. So we have to finally to add all the residual pistons there and then we can start the absorption process. Before we start the absorption process, we have to take a look and we have to check that everything is mounted correctly so that we don't lose our samples. Syringes, samples, pistons are ready. Duplex combs, we have to add two more, otherwise we will lose our samples. This is not very nice. Therefore, I recommend, I strongly recommend to use the tweezer because without the tweezer and only the hand gloves, if we use to touch the containers only with the hand gloves, we might contaminate our containers and this is not very sufficient to our AOX results. It might happen that we have an overestimation. So therefore, I used to have the tweezer because the contact area is quite small and so we have no uh, contaminations um, present there. So we take the tweezer, take our active carbon containers, put them into the duplex parts of the columns here and then we mount everything together by screwing it. So after we have everything mounted together, we have our duplex column here available, then we can put it directly to the position where it belongs to, and then we can go ahead.
the real log connection is quite simple to add the containers and to remove the duplex comb in the same way quite easy. For high particle load samples, we recommend to use a triplex column with a filter which is on the top or prior the two active carbon containers. This filter deals as, yeah, or this tube deals as a filter which um, traps a major part of the particles which are not able to block the residual system. The mounting of this triplex column is called it's more or less the same. We have only additional container on top, which is our filter, which can be screwed in the same way to the duplex column. And now it's a triplex column because we have three containers in a row, which can be mounted in the same way as the APU7. daily routine is finished and the system is working properly, then we can add our samples to the sample tray. And the nice thing is from the Autos 36, the auto sampler which is equipped now, we have the possibility to mix column method and batch method in one sequence. Due to the big inner diameter of the auto sampler rack, we can handle 18 by 8 mm containers from the batch method as well as 18 by 6 mm from the column method. Thanks.